Hello and welcome to a short video about Posted in the Past, which is a project I started almost 20 years ago when my parents bought a postcard at a car boot sale. It was sent to a soldier in the Chelsea barracks and, and I decided I would try and find out more about this soldier. His name was Gilbert Freeman and quickly discovered that actually he had been killed in the Battle of the Somme. I felt very strongly that um, I should actually try to find out more about his life, not just his death. And I did this by using genealogy and that meant creating a family tree for him. And that's how I have completed all of the research in my books. So I created a family tree for Gilbert and discovered his uh, siblings, his parents, etc. And where they lived and where they worked. And over the years, I had quite a lot of information that I'd collated about the family. And, and I knew that, that Gilbert's two brothers had emigrated to America. So I decided I would put the information online as an article. And if ever they were looking for more information about their, their family or, or their um, or Gilbert in particular, the information would be there for the newer generations. And um, I put this information on one afternoon and by the next morning, the um, granddaughter of one of Gilbert's brothers contacted me. So there was a wonderful exchange of information and I was able to send them photographs of where their ancestors lived, etc. And for me personally, as someone doing some research, it was very satisfying to complete the research and then to pass it on and for it to be shared. So I decided I would research some more postcards and over the years I've done hundreds and the first batch were included in the first book in the series and the second book, Second Delivery, has been published this year. So I'd like to just talk to you about one of the postcards that's in the new book and it, it was sent from Australia to a spinster music teacher in London. Annie was in her 40s at this time and actually that might have been pretty much her story. The, the postcard hadn't been signed so there was no way I could identify who had, who had sent it to her. And, um, and so uh, I didn't like to give up obviously and I carried on my research and discovered that, that she was married in 1914. And it, this proved to be quite a good example of how you can use the resources that are available to us as family historians. She married Edgar Nodes and on the marriage register, he's obviously signed his name and it's a very distinctive handwriting and it's actually a perfect match for the handwriting on the postcard. So clearly um, she and Edgar knew each other um, before he'd gone to Australia. Once I had his name, I could obviously do his family tree and I found him uh, working in Australia and also on a passenger list when he returned to, to England. And he actually returned just a matter of weeks before the couple married. On the marriage register, he's declared his occupation as undertaker and so is his father's. I obviously created a family tree for Edgar and his, fa his family and found that his grandfather was also an undertaker and coffee maker and so were several of his uncles and cousins. One of his cousins, Horace Nodes, was actually president of the British Undertakers Association and in 1919 he was approached by the British government to help bring home the unknown warrior. Horace felt that this wasn't something which should be a financial burden on the people of this country and so he went to the membership of the Undertakers Association and each was asked to donate a shilling. So Horace arranged for the coffin to be made and then he accompanied it to France where he fulfilled his duties as an undertaker and then accompany the unknown warrior home to this country where it was eventually interred in Westminster Abbey. 
there's added poignancy to this story. Um, I mean, the unknown warrior, I think, is something which we're all familiar with. And of course, all of the families that I've researched at this time would have been affected by the First World War. Um, Gilbert, for instance, uh, he was killed in the Battle of the Somme and he has no known grave. And this also was something which the Nodes family had a connection with because they had lost people in the First World War and at least one of those soldiers had no known grave. And so there was um, an added um, poignancy to the role that, that Horace was asked to fulfil. Matching the handwriting from the postcard to the marriage register was obviously key in, in opening up this, this story. And um, if you have looked at your own family history, or, or perhaps you're thinking about it, the 1911 census is another document which will have the handwriting perhaps of one of your ancestors. Usually the return would have been completed by the head of the household, although I have come across several that, that weren't, they were completed perhaps by uh, a son or a daughter who was an adult. But usually it would be the head of the household. Some of the postcards that I've researched were obviously not sent by relatives, so they, they couldn't be found within the family tree that I created. And um, the message sort of would often suggest that they might be a close neighbour. And so I used the 1911 census to walk up and down the road of where the actual recipient lived to see if I could find who sent the postcard. And I did succeed in, in, in several of these instances. Of course, it only works if the head of the household has actually completed the return and they were the person who sent the postcard. So you've got a lot of, of what ifs that could affect that, that kind of research. But the handwriting on, on the postcard that was sent to Annie from Edgar um, was a lovely example of, of them being able to tie the family all together and to actually complete the research. Obviously, I had no idea when I began that particular card's research where I would be taken. As I mentioned, um, I just felt that perhaps I was researching a spinster music teacher in London. I had no idea that um, I would find that she'd married someone involved with a, a story that um, affects us all today. So it's just another example, I think, of, of how postcards sent from 100 years ago, or longer actually, um, can, can actually open the door to uh, facets of our history. And they, they, they bring, a, um, I think, a personal touch to the history because um, Horace was deeply affected by what he was asked to do. And in interviews later, um, he recalls sailing back on HMS Verdant to Dover and then hearing a band playing music and having a spine tingling moment and that he never had felt so proud of being British that at, at that time. So a remarkable story and, um, and one of many that I, I've researched and you can find that one in Second Delivery. Uh, both books are available. You can follow me on Twitter and on Facebook as posted in the past. Most days I share a postcard on, on those sites and it, it might be a postcard from the first book, the second book, it might be a postcard that I've just bought that I will research in the future. But every day I like to try and share something and I also share on Twitter um, information about genealogy, uh, anything that might help uh, someone do their, their family tree research. But I think even if you haven't done any research and, and you're perhaps a fan of who do you think you are or a house through time, you, you'll recognise the methods I've used and um, will perhaps find that, that there is something that might even encourage you to begin your family history research. Anyway, that's the end of this short video. Uh, thank you for listening and um, hopefully I'll be able to record some more in the future. Thank you.